Welcome to Dr. Ben's Micronutrients. In today's episode, let's talk about zinc. Zinc is a bluish white metallic element with an atomic number of 30 and atomic weight of 65.4, which makes up about 0.02% of the Earth's crust and is the 23rd most abundant element. Because of its nature as a transitional element in the periodic table, zinc possesses certain chemical properties that makes it especially useful and important in biological systems. Specifically, zinc is able to constitute strong but readily exchangeable and flexible complexes with organic molecules. This enables it to modify the three-dimensional structure of nucleic acids, specific proteins and cellular membranes and influence the catalytic properties of many enzyme systems and intracellular signaling. Now this is important. Zinc's absence of redox properties, which means it doesn't participate in the oxidation uh, in our systems, allows it to be transported in biological systems without inducing oxidant damage. Now this can occur with other trace elements such as iron and copper. The history of our recognition of the significance of zinc in nutrition and even more in clinical medicine and public health is remarkably brief. In other words, we didn't pay that much attention to zinc. The first major conceptual breakthrough came in 1961 with the hypothesis that zinc deficiency was a major etiological factor in the syndrome of adolescent nutritional dwarfism that had been identified principally and extensively in Middle Eastern countries. Approximately one decade later, severe zinc deficiency had been identified in industrial countries, notably with the recognition that the rare inherited disorder acrodermatitis enteropathica was attributable to a defect in zinc metabolism. Because of zinc deficiency in soil and zinc being an important element that can affect nutrient value of crops, zinc deficiency in soil reduces agricultural productivity as well as zinc content in agricultural products. Now this zinc deficiency is high in soils of several states in South Asia. So how much zinc does the human body contain? About 2 to 3 grams and nearly 90% of this is found in muscle and bone. As well, on the cellular level, 30 to 40 percent of zinc is localized in the nucleus, 50 percent in the cytosol, that's the liquid in the cell, and the remaining part is associated with membranes. So what are the clinical manifestations of low zinc or zinc deficiency in the human body? Zinc and immune function. Now zinc is essential in maintaining the integrity of the immune system, especially for normal development and function of cells that mediate both innate and adaptive immune responses. The cells of the innate system are neutrophils, macrophages and natural killer cells. Now these cells are the first line of defense and adaptive are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, the ones that are important for the making of antibodies. As well, zinc deficiency or inadequacy depresses immune function. So alterations in the immune function might explain why low zinc status has always been associated with increased susceptibility to pneumonia and other infections. Zinc and uh, wound healing. 
Now, zinc helps maintain the integrity of skin and mucosal membranes. So we know that patients with chronic leg ulcers have abnormal zinc metabolism and low zinc levels. And therefore, clinicians frequently treat skin ulcers with zinc supplements. Zinc and diarrhea. Now, zinc causes alterations in the immune response and that probably contributes to increased susceptibility to infections such as those that cause diarrhea especially in children. Results from published trials report that zinc supplementation in developing countries helps reduce the duration and severity of diarrhea in zinc deficient or otherwise malnourished children. This is a summary of the WHO and the UNICEF on clinical management of acute diarrhea in children. Now what they say is one has to of course recognize the signs of dehydration and serious medical symptoms and we, one has to prevent dehydration by giving appropriate fluids that is central. Now one has to also make sure that there is zinc supplementation because that is a part of the treatment. The common cold. Researchers say that zinc could reduce the severity and duration of cold symptoms by directly inhibiting the viral binding and replication in the nasal mucosa and therefore suppressing the inflammation or inflammatory state. Now we also know that when zinc is taken in a lozenge or a syrup form, it appears to reduce the duration of symptoms when taken shortly after a person develops a cold. age-related macular degeneration in the eye. Researchers have suggested that both zinc and antioxidants delay the progression of age-related macular degeneration and vision loss, possibly by preventing cellular damage in the retina. So, in another population-based cohort study in the Netherlands, High dietary intake of zinc as well as beta-carotene, vitamin C and vitamin E was associated with reduced risk of age-related macular degeneration in elderly subjects. Pregnancy and prenatal development. Studies are just starting to give you know, much needed attention to pregnancy and the effects of maternal zinc status on both prenatal and postnatal development. So early results of these endeavors indicate that poor maternal zinc status in pregnancy or during pregnancy can have adverse effects on fetal brain function. And as seen in the fetus, there's a delayed mental development in young children as well, where studies have established that zinc deficiency in early life interferes with normal brain development and cognitive functions. Zinc and malaria. Early studies have indicated that zinc supplementation may reduce the incidence of clinical attacks of malaria in children. That will be most useful. What about type 2 diabetes mellitus? There is a close relationship between zinc and insulin action. In the pancreas, in the pancreas beta cells, zinc is involved in insulin synthesis as well as its storage in the secretory vesicles. Zinc may also stimulate blood glucose uptake and metabolism in insulin sensitive tissue, therefore reducing overall blood glucose levels. The role of zinc in healthy aging is particularly important as it prevents neoplastic cell growth, that is excessive cell growth. It is also involved in mitotic cell division, DNA and RNA repair, so it's pretty central. Now, also following zinc supplementation in elderly or in an elderly population, the incidence of infections was found to be significantly lower. 
Zinc deficiency is also associated with acute and chronic liver disease. Zinc supplementation protects against toxin-induced liver damage and is used as a therapy for hepatic encephalopathy in patients refractory to standard treatment. Zinc is pretty much central in the treatment of skin diseases. Shampoos containing zinc provide clinical benefits for treatment of scalp seborrheic dermatitis. As well, topical or local application of zinc in the form of uh, divalent zinc ions have also been reported to provide photoprotection, that is protection against bright light or too much light through its antioxidant function. Zinc deficiency has been implicated in a number of factors as we just saw, from birth defects to retinal detachment. So it is very important to make sure that we take enough zinc. What are the natural sources of zinc? Lobsters, red meat like lamb, oysters, crabs, yogurt, cheese, almonds, kidney beans and cashew nuts to name a few. Here is an important take home message. In this table what I'm trying to show you is the, the availability of zinc. The first column gives you the food group. The second and third column clubbed as a second column gives you the zinc content of that food or those foods. The third and the fourth column club together as a phytate content column and the last column is the absorbable zinc column. Now what we notice over here is that the phytate content as shown in the third column is pretty high in the non-meats and the non-dairy section. Phytate stops or uh, blocks the absorption of zinc by chelating with, the, uh, with zinc. So the take home real message here is that meats, seafood and dairy give you the best absorbable level of zinc. What about zinc supplements? Because it's difficult to efficiently absorb zinc on its own, zinc is often attached to a chelating agent in supplements. A chelating agent is a substance that bonds with zinc to create a more absorbable end product. So what I've given here are blocks of information which shows you the amino acid chelates and the organic chelates as well as the inorganic zinc supplements that are available in the market. What I would normally recommend would be zinc monomethionine, zinc orotate and zinc picolinate. It would certainly be inappropriate to have this presentation without mentioning the recommended dietary allowances or RDA for zinc. So here is a table that gives you exactly that. Uh, zinc recommendation depends on the age of the, of the individual as well as a f a physiological status like pregnancy and lactation. Now I've taken you through the health challenges of inadequate zinc or zinc deficiency. I've taken you through the sources of zinc and the challenges of absorption um, when it comes to phytates. So I'd like to put together all of that information here in the major causes for zinc deficiency, which could be because of inadequate intake of zinc, malabsorption when it comes to zinc, excessive loss of zinc, or an increased demand for zinc. Increased demand for zinc can happen in a physiological state like pregnancy. Inadequate intake can happen because of low zinc containing food, or food that have phytates can, that can stop the absorption or hinder the absorption of uh, zinc. It can also happen because of uh, poor food processing as well as prolonged hospital stay where zinc supplementation can at times become a problem. Zinc absorption may happen because of medical 
medical challenges like liver dysfunction or pancreatic dysfunction or inflammatory bowel disease or even because of drugs like EDTA and penicillin. Now excessive zinc loss can happen because of diarrhea which is very very common and even because of increased urine uh, loss of zinc as in because of liver cirrhosis or in diabetes mellitus or because of intravenous uh, increased intravenous fluids which causes incre increased uh, uh, urination and loss of uh, minerals. Let me end this zinc presentation by saying that zinc is essential.